This is Terrence Orange here, Banks with Information Age Financial Solutions, coming to you about commercial real estate, real estate in general, taxes, and pensions. And it's kind of a combined effort of just explain, explaining a little bit of where we're at in the real estate market as a whole. Now, prior to this, I got started real estate in 1999. I did my first deal there, different economic time. I did. I operated a company from 1999 to about 2008, and when I got my first, when Lehman Brothers crashed, my business crashed, and I firstly had my first financial fu, and and I mean that in the sense that I first found out what it is to be over leveraged, not understanding because that was my first real estate cycle, and finding out how much I did not know. Through that, I was able to rebuild and struggled it struggled to get back and then I started really wanting to know how I, I thought I was prepared and how I was going to become better going forward. Um, studied a lot more, got involved with a private company and as a project manager because I've had a number of real estate experience just to get it from a different angle from the banking side because I usually always use lenders for that process and understand from their perspective of how they looked at the loan and when and trying to find things from a different kind of angle. And so I'm speaking from there, not just as a real estate investor who's have done it before, but also been through a crash cycle and came out and still was able to survive through that particular time. And the reason why I'm speaking about this is because a lot of individuals, especially a lot of things on YouTube, is, is constantly for individuals giving information who have only been through it, been through it. They've only saw an up market from the last, let's say they got started in 2011. And they're thinking, well, based on past experience, I can then just, it's going to bounce back and everything's going to be uh, normal. And I'm, you know, the market corrected and I'm going to be able to snatch up deals and be able to, to do things. This is maybe the time. Not saying that it, negating that and it's possible, but really understand the magnitude of where we're at. And with this many people being unemployed, real estate that I had to learn the hard way is, especially if you have been through a crash before, is predicated on employment and banks financing your particular deal. When markets and this many people being unemployed and so many different, and this is completely different. Now, this time is different because they've given, not only that they've, they've thrown the kitchen sink at this, they've given people forbearance options and uh, tenants are not having to pay. And we're just finding ourselves in an economic climate that just hasn't existed like this in the past at least 10 to 20 years. And I say this and stress this enough because there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that still needs to unfold, especially in the commercial real estate space, where a lot of businesses found out that, well, we can work remotely from home, especially if you're in that space, realizing that, you know, we don't even need an office to operate and how that's going to impact. And the reason why I'm stating that is because tax revenues are really generated from a lot of issues on terms of real estate itself. And with that so many people being unemployed some people businesses changing the direction of how they going to utilize commercial space going forward that's going to have an impact and it ripples the ripple effect still has not been seen yet and i've did a video in the past about will the section 8 model be still viable i uh, encourage you to take a look at that because it just tax revenue is based on it, and a lot of these local cities are not getting the revenue that they had before and they, they're having to get loans from the federal government, but they still have pensions and different aspects to, to cover. And that that's still eating up capital before. And the reason I'm saying this is because real estate became in the last eight to 10 years, just became the, one of the greatest places for people to get revenue at. And a lot of money was thrown in that from Airbnb to uh, apartment complexes where a lot of that's being subsidized. How that plays out into commercial real estate, it's still unfolding and people are looking just to jump right back in. I'm in so many conversations of people who, who have flips on, you know, flip flipping real estate and they have some flips on their hand. They got it under contract. They're lucky enough to get under contract and they're finding out that the contracts are not going forward. So they're now having to readjust their particular plan because now they're going to have to hold the property a lot longer than they, they thought they would. Uh, refinancing for rental properties. Uh, the lenders are becoming even more stricter. Your credit scores have to be in <laughs> over 700. And this is the, the different things that, that people are not really taking in consideration enough, especially when I'm seeing all so many people talking to me, especially in the space saying, yeah, we're just going to do just a number of deals. Uh, can we, when, 
can we get more money back in? I, I got plenty of capital on. And their mode of business has been predicated on strictly receiving income from real estate. If you have not been in the cycle before where the real estate market has crashed, you really don't have the experience to know how long the lag time can be before really things unfold and it's really a time to get back in. I say that from experience and really learning of how it's very hard to come back. <laughs> and that's why I stress enough, be patient, give it six to eight months to see how this three really things unfold and how that's going to operate in your particular city, especially with individuals, not so many people receiving unemployment, the unemployment issues going forward. Will people be rehired? How does that affect the commercial real estate? How does that affect the tax, uh, the taxes for your particular city and how are they going to be able to to fund the particular projects for affordable housing and just real estate going forward. It was in the extra, <laughs> nobody wants to say this, but it was in a huge bubble from before and I've done a number of videos about that. So when it corrects, it can correct dramatically and it's still unfolding and people are still just talking like we're going to get right back to business. And just today to be cautious, about. not saying that it's still not the most viable way to regenerate wealth, but it's Ill, it's still an illiquid investment. You can't just get rid of it that quickly. Um, and the old models may not work, as I did before in the video. And again, I encourage you to take a look at it from the uh, Section 8 model um, and affordable housing. So with that being said, be cautious, be patient, see how this thing unfolds, and move accordingly going forward. If this video has been any value to you, please subscribe, hit the like button, and until my next video, I'm out.